Happy pre-Friday, everybody, or as I like to call it, Thursday. And on this Throwback Thursday, we're going back to an older blog post I wrote on some dieting stuff. And it is titled, Eat What You Want. So as I read through this, you'll look through a little bit of training footage. So I hope you guys strap in, buckle up, learn something about your diet. So, eat what you want. Diets are crazy, but doesn't mean you have to be. I grew up as a stick figure of a kid. Up until my sophomore year of college, I was a bean pole, six foot and 130 pounds soaking wet. Not too good of a look. I hated how skinny I was and it seemed like no matter what I tried, nothing ever changed. Maybe you're like me and battle to anchor down or get blown away in a slight breeze. Or maybe you're the opposite. I wanted to shed some extra pounds. It all comes down to diet. But let's be real, dieting is hard, especially when it's so drastic like going paleo, keto, or any other diet ending in O. In this post, I'll cover how you can still eat what you want while being more mindful of your health through tracking your macronutrients, calories, weight, and progress picks. Like I said, dieting is hard. We're all raised with certain eating habits that are challenging to break. Me personally, I was raised on ramen noodles, hamburger helper, white bread, and deli meats. All food was highly processed, loaded with sodium, and lacked any type of vegetable or real nutrients. After a lifetime of this, is it realistic to move away from pre-made meals and lunch meat, cold turkey, no pun intended, in a drastic overnight diet change? Maybe, for a while. If you're anything like me, you probably tried some dieting, was a food Nazi for a few weeks, and then fell off the wagon so hard your ancestors felt it. Humans are creatures of habit, and when decades have gone into forming these habits, it's going to take more than a few weeks to rewire those patterns. So, my biggest thing when it comes to dieting, or any change, is slowly transitioning towards what we'd like to adhere to long term, not throwing out our entire fridge in a food frenzy. What the hell are macronutrients? We all know what they are, it's just a fancier way of saying carbs, proteins, and fats. These three categories are where we derive our calorie intake and are found in unison in nearly every food. However, some foods are higher in certain areas than others. For simplicity's sake, because we've already determined dieting is a battle, let's break down these three categories into common foods we all know. For carbs, think pastas, potatoes, breads, grains, and fruit. The last one kind of seems to come out of nowhere, but that's just the way it is sometimes. For protein, think nuts, seeds, beans, eggs, and lean meats. I listed meats last because these can be high in fats, which we can be careful of. Last but not least, we have fats, oils, nuts, again, and dairy products are the fats we'd like to think of. Now that we have a better idea of what macronutrients are and where we mainly get them, let's talk about tracking. My fitness pal. The easiest tool I've found to help count and track my macros is an app called MyFitnessPal. We have a huge database of foods and a barcode scanning system for easy lookup. All you have to do is head to your app store on your phone and download it for free. You can also choose to pay for a premium account. I've done just fine with the free version. You can choose to sign up using your Facebook or another email address. Or if you have an Under Armour account, you can use that as well. After choosing your login method, it will ask for several data points. Would you like to lose, gain, or maintain your weight? What's your daily activity level? Male or female? Birthday? Where do you live? How tall are you? How much do you currently weigh? How much do you want to weigh? Then it will ask you about your weekly goal. It will auto-populate two choices. Finally, it will ask for email, password, and firstborn child. I'm just kidding. If you're a visual person, there are screen recordings on the blog post, so go check that out on the website so you can get a better understanding of what you're getting yourself into. Sweet, now that we're all set up, how the hell do we use this thing? On your home screen, it should look like this. Again, gotta check it out on the site. At the top, you'll see the goal for how many calories to eat that day, how much food you've already eaten, and you can even connect your phone's step counter or log exercise to account for calories burned. It'll obviously show zero until we've logged some grub, so let's do it. Click the blue plus sign at the bottom, click food, click the meal you're wanting to log, either type the food you're logging or click the barcode icon on the right of the search bar, in which you'll scan the barcode of the label, click the food you'd like to add, adjust the amount of servings, and voila, you've logged your first food. Again, there's another video with a screen recording on the site and the actual blog post, 
if you're having trouble kind of visualizing this verbally. Finally, we can track our macros. Now that we've gotten our food logged, we can dive deeper and see where all these calories are coming from. You'll notice when you log your food, it gives you a small circle comprised of blue, red, and green segments with calories in the center. Each color represents one of these three macronutrients, so you'll get a pretty good idea of what the food is comprised of. Obviously not all foods have the same makeup, so as we log more foods, our daily percentages of where our calories come from becomes apparent. To see these overall percentages for the day laid out in a graphical representation, click the More tab at the bottom right hand corner. Click Nutrition, click Macros on the top right, and there you have it, a pie chart. Mm, pie. With the same color coding showing you the percentage of calories coming from each macronutrient for the day. Again, if you got lost along the way, there's another screen recording on the website in the actual blog post. Final product will also show a picture on that blog post. After you log a meal, you can come here and see if you're on track for the day. You'll notice there are goals by each macro category. These can obviously be changed to meet whatever goal it is you're trying to achieve. Whether it's adding muscle and gaining weight, losing fat or weight, or staying right where you are. Manipulation of macro goals can be a great way to still eat what you want, but in the right amounts for your goal. So, how do we change these goals? From the home screen, click more. At the bottom right hand corner, click nutrition, click goals. On the top right under nutrition goals, click calorie, carbs, protein, and fat goals. Now you can adjust your macro percentage as well as your daily calorie intake. Again, if you got lost, there's screen recordings up on the blog post on the site. If you're looking at gaining some muscle mass and weight in general, a good starting point is 55% of calories from carbs, 20% from fat, 25% from protein. If you're looking to maintain your weight, a good starting point is 40% carbs, 30% fat, 30% protein. If you're looking to lose fat or a little bit of weight, a good starting point is 25% carbs, 40% fat, 35% protein. Notice, for each of these scenarios, I said starting points. I'd religiously track your food and hit your macros on point for a month before you go adjusting these percentages to see how it changes your progress. Everyone's a little different, so you're going to just have to see what works best for you. I found that bringing awareness to what I'm eating and how much I'm eating drives me to make healthier decisions. It's also worth noting that I haven't talked about restricting calories at all. I'd suggest to sticking with whatever my fitness pal auto populates for your calories and adjust your macros first. If you've played with your macro percentages and are not making the progress you'd like, then start slowly by adjusting your calorie count by 100 to 250 calories a day for a month. Recess, reassess and readjust as needed. Logging weight, exercise and progress picks. My Fitness Pal also allows you to track other things. One of the most important ones, in my opinion, is logging your weight. I'd step on a scale at least once a week for the sake of good collecting data. Beware though, the scale doesn't tell you how your clothes fit, how you feel about yourself, or if you're replacing fat with muscle. All it tells you is gravity's pull on your mass. In short, don't stress, it's just a number. To log your weight, click the blue plus sign at the bottom, click weight, enter your current weight, and my favorite part, the progress photo. Click the camera icon on the right, snap a quick photo, and finish your log by clicking the check mark in the top right hand corner. There it will take you to a graph that shows your weight change since you started logging as well as a photo gallery of all your progress pics which makes for great motivation as you get to see your body change. I suggest weighing yourself on the same day and time every week while taking your picture in the same spot and pose to get an accurate reading of how you're changing. Again, for visual learners out there, go to the site and you can see all the pictures and videos on the blog. As for logging exercise, click the blue plus sign at the bottom, click exercise, click either cardio or strength, search for an exercise, log your number of sets, reps, and weights, or minutes you performed your cardio along with the start time, click the check mark in the top right hand corner, and it will now add calories to your daily intake as you've burned some working out. Again, there's a screen recording of this up on the site. 
I generally don't log exercise as I'd rather focus on my efforts on tracking food, macros, weight, and progress picks versus adding exercise and throwing off my calorie count in total. As of now, cardio is the only exercise that will add calories to your intake for the day. And as I primarily do weight training, I didn't find this function too useful, but maybe you will. So summary, dieting can be such a pain in the ass and a huge source of discouragement. So if there's one thing I want you to walk away with, it's this. The point isn't to starve ourselves. The point is to begin a process of mindfully fueling our bodies and taking care of ourselves better. We can do so by tracking our macronutrients or the amount of carbs, fat, and protein we ingest daily. A great and simple tool to use for this is MyFitnessPal where you can log food, adjust your macro percentages, your caloric intake, take progress pics, and log your weight while seeing it all broken down graphical. As always, I hope you found something useful in this post, but if you have any other questions, feel free to drop a comment below, send us an email, or schedule a call. Thanks for the read, guys. I will see you on the next one.